Yes. It was really good to read your stories and at times heartbreaking. Some of the experiences that you've gone through, um, you could feel the pain a little bit in the pages and, and having not, I mean, I, I, I've not had those experiences, but I've interacted with several that have had. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I, and I've read their experiences into yours. You know, you gave mm-hmm. voice to many of those people and I, I really did appreciate that. And at times made me uncomfortable. I mean, it just, it does a little bit because you're, you're reading from something you're, you're trying to understand and, it, and there's, they jar your categories, if mm-hmm. you will. And, 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 and that's, a, but that's a good thing. It, 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 sometimes you got to wrestle with that to say, do I agree? Do I not agree? I need to listen. I want to listen. And so that's what I wanted to do. I want to really hear your stories because I think many people need to hear your stories and what you've gone through. But I want to hear why was this book written? Why, why did you feel the need to write this book? Mm-hmm. And feel free to take turns. I mean, go back and forth. Whoever is, wants to go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, when I when I first took this role a little over five, five and a half years ago or so, one of the thoughts I had was, oh, I think it's time for another book. So when I was a college student in the late 90s, um, this book, Following Jesus Without Dishonoring Your Parents, was was published by IVP also, um, by a team of authors, staff authors. Um, and it was really helpful for me. Um, I didn't connect with everything in the book, but there were things in the book that like named for me. It was written by an Asian American team for Asian American students and helped name some things for me in some categories and things that in white majority spaces aren't talked about as much or or are even talked about in conflict in a diff, in a way that conflicts with some of the values of my family or culture and some of these things. And so that was really instrumental for me. Um, but, you know, I think that book came out in 1998 or something. Um, and so by the time, you know, I, I was director, I was like, I think it's probably about time. Um, and I also was feeling like, yeah, we, we wanted it to be a more um, representative of Asian America. So the, the older book is, is um, East Asian, mostly Chinese, Japanese, Korean background authors. And um, so it just was really feeling like, oh, we want to represent more of our community and who we are and really diverse stories, you know. Um, I think it can be easy for United States society to sort of paint Asian Americans as one thing. Mm -hmm. And that tends to be East Asian or even Chinese American and a particular like socioeconomic bracket or 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 or, you know even jobs. Um, But actually Asian America is incredibly diverse and has the widest income inequality and also just wildly different backgrounds, depending on like, you know, which part of Asia, why your family came over or um, refugee, adoptee, you know, just different things. So we can't represent everyone, right? Like there's only so many authors in a book, but um, wanted to do that. And so invited some folks that I knew were already writing a little bit or had, you know, done some stuff. And um, yeah, we got together in 20, was that 2018? Yeah, I think yeah. it was 2018 to to start kind of like putting together a proposal. Um, our proposal went through in no 20, spring 2019. I think we thought, oh, we'll, we'll get this done pretty quick. <laughs> but, you know, pandemic, all the things. And uh, but yeah, super proud of like just us working on that together and and seeing that through. There's definitely a time in the process where I was like, I don't know if we're going to finish. Yeah. Or I don't know if I'm going to finish. I felt like that because I was like, <laughs> I feel like I'm like the weakest link. And I was like, no, I got to finish because I got to finish my chapter because otherwise everybody else's work goes to it. So it's really fun to get to do something together. Like, I feel like that was really cool. Yeah, I was really grateful to get Sabrina's invitation to to help uh, with the book. And I think for me, um, I think being South Asian American, uh, there's there's not like um, it's like we kind of feel like we're at the beginning of a wave, you know, so if uh, if like my generation those who are just a little bit older than me if we don't like uh voice our stories or create our cultural artifacts like the the wave that comes from behind us won't have anything you know and so i was thinking like we can't just like wishful thinking doesn't create our culture you know or doesn't create artifacts like you have to do something and one of the things i was really hoping for was a space to actually uh, write a very particular South Asian American story from a Christian perspective and let it be like solidified somewhere. And then people can critique it and mess with it and make it better. 
but when there's nothing out there, we can't, we can't do anything with it. And so, um, you know, Al, our editor was so generous, but he would always say like, get as specific as you can with your story. Cause if you can reach, like he would say things like, if you can reach the heart of Dublin, you can reach any city. It, when, once you reach the heart of Dublin, then you reach the heart of every city. So like something like get down to the very, very core of your story, be very, very particular, and then it'll start to resonate with other people. Um, and the feedback I was getting a lot from South Asians and Indian Americans was, it was crazy to read my story in a book. Mm-hmm. Like I'm reading through like, you know, and they're like, that's crazy. That's our story, you know? And it, it, it helped them feel valued or validated. Like, oh, mm-hmm. I, I belong here. And this is in the fabric of our country. Our stories are woven into that. And the reason why people get alarmed when they read it is, is just narrative scarcity. Like there's just not a lot of, you know, so like you want to, you want to encourage other people. This is, this is just the beginning, like, mm-hmm. you know, and then seeing more of it in pop culture, like more Indian Americans or South Asian Americans in pop culture. And I really want to see it in Christian spaces as well. Uh, I was really thinking about that South Asian college student who like, you know, randomly gets his book um, and then reads it and, and they're blown away. They're like, that's my story. I can't believe it, you know? Um, and I was really hoping that would melt their heart uh, towards Christ, you know, um, and like really reverberate and help their discipleship. So anyways. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and David, David is Filipino and um, La is Hmong American. And um, both of them were also, uh, La's currently on university staff and David was as well back then. So that was kind of the connection. I knew, I knew Lon did, I mean, I knew David and Linson better, and then somebody else had recommended La and so got to talk with her and was like, oh yeah, this would be great. So it's been, it's been great. 